these days it's generally accepted that these guys are really good for your reef tank. So how do you get some? How do you keep them healthy? How do you keep them reproducing so that they can feed your tank? Let's talk a bit about that. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So about three months ago, I decided to get a pack of pods for my tank and actually go ahead and seed it properly. So I got Seed Pack E from Canada Copapods. And throughout this video, I'll refer to them and information I'm getting from them. Um, by the way, they did not provide these to me. I bought them with my own money. Um, but what I'm going to tell you about is something you can do with any high quality phytoplankton food and supply of copepods, rotifers, etc. The main thing here is I've figured out a way with the help of Canada copepods of dosing phytoplankton that's easy and convenient. And that's the main thing I want to show you here. The food that came with the seed pack is this eight ounce bottle of high concentration phytoplankton blend. It's non-viable, which means it won't reproduce wildly out of control in your tank. And it's the perfect food for the bottom of the food chain. Later on, I'll show you how I'm going to be dosing that. These live creatures are generally harvested almost immediately before shipping. Sometimes they're shipped during cold weather and the cold won't kill them, but it will put them into stasis. So as soon as you get them, it's recommended that you remove the bottle caps so that oxygen can get into the bottles. And secondly, that you allow them to warm up gradually to room temperature. They should be seeded as soon as possible after you get them. It can wait a day, but not much more than that. Okay, so per the instructions, all of the flow is to be turned off. Any skimmer, UV sterilizer, that sort of thing. I can only show you the sump right now because of course the upper tank is dark since the directions say to do this after lights out. Now in the sump there are no predators to see the little guys that I'm putting in here so I think I can get away with pouring this stuff in with the lights on down here. So let's go. We'll add the four bottles and one thing to think about is that the total of the eight bottles of stuff is 128 ounces, which is a gallon. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to remove a gallon of water from the return chamber. That'll keep the system balanced in terms of water volume. After an hour, I'll turn the return pump back on, but I'm going to leave the skimmer and the UV sterilizer off overnight to give the pods a good chance to settle in. Here we are the next morning. Last night after I dumped the four bottles in the sump, I dumped the other four bottles in the display tank up here. I left all of the flow on except that the return pump was turned off. I couldn't resist. I shone a flashlight into the water and oh my god there were so many little tiny specks moving around in there. So those bottles may look empty but they certainly are not. Now I move on to the next step, which is feeding all of these rotifers, copepods, and zooplankton using the high concentration version of the phytoplankton food. And it's pretty interesting because the dosage that they recommend is one to two milliliters per 200 gallons of water. That is how concentrated that stuff is. And of course I have around 100 gallons, so I think I could get away with dosing one milliliter um, of the stuff at a time. Second thing is, this is only dosed every other day. So that eight ounce bottle, which has I believe 230 some milliliters in it, that's 230 doses. So if I dose it on alternate days, that's well over a year's worth of food for this tank. That eight ounce bottle when bought outside a seed pack on its own is $49.99. And that does seem like a lot, but when you think that it's well over a year's worth of food for all of your rotifers and zooplankton, it turns out to be a pretty cheap alternative on a per dose basis. Of course, this is for fresh, non-viable phytoplankton that's farmed. It's not for bottles of chemical phytoplankton that sit on shelves for several years before they're finally expired. Uh, this is the real stuff. And outside Canada, I know the real stuff is available at various places, um, both online and local to where people live. So you should be able to get some. 
So now let's look at dosing. Dosing phytoplankton has been talked about a lot recently. It's one of those things that's still a tiny bit controversial, but I don't think it can do any harm. And that's one of the big reasons I decided I was going to do it. I was in a bit of a conundrum because as I said before, there's 237 milliliters I checked <laughs> in this bottle. And that's the equivalent of 474 days worth of doses to my approximately 100 gallon tank. The thing is, it has a two month shelf life in the refrigerator and a two year shelf life if frozen. And this kind of confused me a little bit because I didn't know whether it had to be frozen from the outset in order to get two years worth of life out of it or whether you could use up whatever you could that was fresh for two months and freeze the rest. I really wasn't sure. Well, as luck would have it, Canada Copepods was at the Toronto Coral Show when I went there, so I asked them this question about freezing. And they told me that this stuff could be frozen at any point during the first two months and it would last in the freezer for two years. So this was excellent. I hadn't missed the boat on getting this stuff frozen so I wouldn't have to throw it away. But it was the other thing they told me that really caught my attention. And that was that some of their customers freeze this stuff in ice cube trays. I love this idea and that made me realize I needed to look for something that made really small ice cubes. Not that I ever need an excuse to go to the dollar store, but this is the best excuse I've had in a long time. And sure enough, look what they had there. These cost $1.25 each and they're ice cube trays. There are 21 segments in each one. And the really cool thing is that the lower section of these is made of silicone. So first of all, it's flexible. And second of all, it doesn't stick to anything. So I can stack these things one on top of another and the upper tray won't stick to any liquid in the lower tray because it's silicone. The stuff just slides right off. Not only that, silicone means that it's going to be easy to pop the individual frozen pieces out of the tray as needed. So what I'm showing you here is that I cut them up so that they would fit into freezer bags as I stacked them up because they were maybe an inch too long on their own to fit in the largest freezer bags that I had. So that's the only reason I cut them. Storing the stuff in the fridge, you should shake it once every 24 hours at least and I do that faithfully. So before I start this, I'm making sure that it's completely shaken up so it's all in suspension and nothing is sitting on the bottom. I'm using this little two milliliter pipette. And uh, one little word of warning, this stuff really stinks, but that's normal. It's because there are organic processes going on all the time in the bottle. And as soon as you take the lid off, of course, the gas escapes. Preparing all these trays really didn't take all that long. And I'm really looking forward to being able to dose this quickly, efficiently, and easily into my tank. That's the thing about dosing phytoplankton that's often discussed is if you get this farmed stuff that's actually not necessarily alive, but a fresh product, you have to make sure you keep it refrigerated. And that for some people is a bit of a deal breaker. And here we are. Because I'd already used some, I ended up with 189 individual doses all ready to go. That's a year's worth easily. So at the beginning, I promised you that I was going to show you a quick, easy, convenient way to dose phytoplankton to your tank. And all you've seen me do is faff about with cutting ice cube trays and mess around with pipe hats and freezer bags and all of that. So here is the payoff. These trays came straight out of the freezer and these little cubes do not move. So all I need to do is flip it upside down, push on the bottom and that little piece of phytoplankton just pops right out. Everything else stays where it's supposed to stay. And now I just have a one single dose of phytoplankton in the little cup. It goes straight to the display tank. Of course, after lights out, I drop it in the top and we're, we're done. We're good to go. No fish will try and go after it because of course it's lights out. It won't matter if it floats around and goes down the overflow because it's meant to dose the entire tank. So I could not be happier to be able to do this. $50 to last well over a year. 
And what's the payoff? Check it out. After seeding my tank with 128 ounces of live zooplankton culture, I have pods like you cannot believe. The best place to see them is in the sump. They're mostly visible on the front glass here, and I've identified at least three different kinds, but I'm sure there are far more. Um, and don't worry, the little brown ones that you see that are fairly large there, I've already looked them up, and they are spheromatid uh, isopods. They are not cyrolinid, so my fish are safe. So I couldn't be happier. It just proves that seeding the tank and then feeding the tank properly has provided this endless supply of healthy food for my fish. These things are also in the display, though they're a lot harder to see. And I think that's because the green wrasse is going around all day long picking at the rocks. Here's a little bit of footage of what I could capture in the display tank, but as you can see, uh, they're very, very difficult to get on camera. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. And to prove that, as a reward for sticking with me right till the end, I'm going to have a draw for a $25 BRS gift certificate. All you need to do to enter is put the hashtag GotPods somewhere in a comment below and do that by midnight February the 16th, 2018, wherever you happen to live. On the 17th, I'll do a video with a random name picker draw and draw one lucky winner. Good luck and thanks again. Mm -hmm.